and welcome back. We are commencing the first segment of our discussions this morning. We are joined by Daryl Spencer. He is the president of the Belize Nurses Association. You would recall that since last week we have been covering issues involving nurses and some of the challenges they are facing with the overall system to which they belong. Good morning, Mr. Spencer. Good morning and thanks for having us. No problem at all. <laughs> Let's begin, first of all, by outlining what some of the primary issues are that you guys are facing as a collective. Well, firstly, I must say, again, thanks for having us to explain what's the position. We're primarily attacking the issues, like we said earlier, on that are pressing. They cannot be resolved next week or next month. There are things that has, should have been done already, as a matter of fact. And in all intents and purposes, we made steps to have them completed before we even got to this point. So like a retirement point, it happens on a day. Mm -hmm. You cannot wait six months later on to solve it because it's something that's happening. To catch up for the position of the task force, um, we just finished a national tour, the association meeting with the membership. And the position is that the task force was created, yes, from last year, around September, October. It is a mirror image of uh, another committee that we had, the Nurses Action, Nursing Action Plan Committee. Mm -hmm. So the task force and this committee are one of the same um, principally. So we were supposed to be unveiled basically this year being celebrated as the year of the nurse. Mm -hmm. Because there are these pressing issues that are solved with time, then and the time has passed. That is why we brought them to the forefront, and we actually had to jump the gun in the presentation of what is the task force. Yeah. So the issues that you are bringing to the table, there have been long-standing issues that nurses in Belize have been facing. Oh, yeah. And uh, you said you also went through your consultations as well to be able to help to clarify your position. Um, tell, me how, tell me what the nurses are saying seems to be the major issue for them at this point. All right. So the tour we did, we started in Punta Gorda. We worked our way right up to Corozal mm -hmm. and finished, ended up in Belize Friday morning. And yes, we stand the, the, to be the, on the criticism that we could have been a little bit more forthcoming with the creation of the task force. Yeah. But after nurses were educated on the objectives of the task force, the, the points that we are working on, and why the task force basically made a step out to the public at that point in time, which is just two weeks ago, when the task force was created from October. When they were all filled in with that, we had an almost unanimous agreement mm -hmm. to continue forward. Mm -hmm. So the nurses really were receptive to the, to the positions we held, and they could all see that they were all things that need, we need as a body, yeah. as an organization, to continue to grow. Let's go back a bit. While you've mentioned retirement as perhaps one of the issues at hand, what is your other challenge or what are your other challenges that are kind of frustrating the work that you guys do as a body? Well, as a body, we, I would have to say the Nurses Association's challenges are regaining a respect for the nurse, regaining a respect for the association, to show the worth of the nurse and the association. Um, that even carries a little friction with the task, fo the task force per se, because seniority in nursing may not have been pushing the narrative of getting the association to full strength to, to support. And now we find ourselves supporting them. Of course, there is a professional point from which the, the association supports the task force and the seniority of nursing mm -hmm. to, for the advancement. So that, that is our major flaw right now. Again, I think you have to, that sounds like a very complex issue and I'm trying to understand what you mean by that. You say the seniority of nursing, what does that mean? So at present moment, the 
the three major seats that we are fighting for. Yes. We're not fighting for. That we need are, to be filled. Need to be filled are the chief nurse or the deputy director of health services. Which nurse Elihio used to be. Used to be. Yes. Her assistant, because that position was practically never filled, it was filled temporarily again by Ms. Anne Matut, which has ascended into the, that mm -hmm. acting position. And then we have the position of the registrar okay. of nursing. So, so currently you have an acting chief nurse. Is that what you're saying? An acting. No assistant. No assistant. And the registrar? Is already retired basically working on an extension. Why are these roles critical in being able to complement or, or uh, perhaps ensure even quality standards from the nurses in the country? Well, to question that the, of the, the need for a chief is, is, is a good question. If we don't have a head, this is a person really versed in the nursing process. Yeah the functions of a nurse, the responsibility of nurses and nursing throughout the country. Yeah. Um, some people get confused and say, but why can't a doctor do it? Mm -hmm. Like we always say the nurses are the backbone of the health system. Mm -hmm. And if the backbone does not have a head, yeah. then the, the body will go to ruin. And that is the position that we must address when it comes to the chief nurse. You want somebody very intimate with the organization, the operations of nurses and nursing in the country to, to be the head to say these are the decisions that we would want to make to make the nurse's life a little bit easier and to make the nurse, put the nurse in a position where they can practice more professionally yeah. and safely for the patient. Yeah. So that's one of the first things that you have uh, sounded the alarm for that you would want to see an establishment of a chief nurse or a deputy director of, of health, health services, services. Um, which is which has been filled by a nurse um, that assistant post which is currently empty and your registrar and the registrar okay so that's one of the issues that you're you're trying to get out there and i know you have an upcoming meeting with um the ministry what the other issue you were speaking of was the shortage and I, we were chatting before, and I was saying, well, you know, nursing shortage is global. Everywhere across the world, people are growing up, children are growing up saying, I want to be a doctor, not necessarily going towards nursing. Um, and so there's a deficiency. How, wh what is your issue in terms of how Belize addresses that? OK, very well said. And this deficiency is international. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I am the type that if you have a problem, if you are going to bring a problem to me, then it would be best resolved if you would brought a position of resolve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, bring an answer. Mm -hmm. And we, there are research, there have been researches done in the country and based on international quotas. When I started nursing back in 91, there was already a shortage. Mm -hmm. yeah. The population was a little over 150, 175,000. We are now at 400,000 and basically the same amount of nurses are, are on the wards. Mm -hmm. We've been hearing, or we've been making presentations to the ministries responsible, mm -hmm. that be public service and Ministry of Health. This is the quota of nursing, nurses we need mm -hmm. so that we can give proper care. And the, the, the posts, the amount of available posts basically have remained the same. So when do we as a country decide, look, we have to create these posts so that we can retain our nurses? We Let's put that into some perspective, just so that our viewers and perhaps myself can also be able to follow along. If we're looking at the Carl Huchner Memorial Hospital, for instance, as the, the nation's referral institution, biggest, right? Are we saying then that we may not have as many nurses as we ought to have for that institution? Is yes, that, that's that exactly what we're, what we're saying. Go ahead. Yeah. So the quota basically nurse-patient ratio is very mm -hmm. important. Yes. Mm -hmm. You cannot expect to have one nurse attend to 10 or 15 patients yeah. with the same high standard 
as you would expect them to deal with three or four patients, which the, the quota, the rate nurse ratio balance there should be around three to five patients per so nurse. So one nurse should be attending to, paying attention, checking charts, checking mm -hmm. IV, checking how they're doing, yeah. um, comfort level, reporting to the doctor for three to five To people. five patients. Mm -hmm. In right. Belize, we're doing double oh, that. We are doing double that in some instances, triple that. Some yeah. instances we have one nurse and there are 18 or 19 patients. Wow. So the, the burden there is that the nurse is kept running around and there are quite instances where the work still cannot be done. But then the end result is the fact that I as a patient get admitted to ward or I go to, to get medical assistance and I walk away not getting the proper care, treatment and attention that I ought to have gotten, but I wouldn't be any wiser to what the situation is as to why I did not get that particular quality of treatment, yeah. not knowing the dynamics and the politics of what is happening with this shortage, correct? Hence, we, correct. Mm -hmm. Hence, this is why I think we need to know more, take it to the public, yeah. mm -hmm. catch the public up on what are the realities yeah. we face as nurses in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Now, this is, this is a crucial issue because I know that it's not necessarily, well, I don't know, I can't say that. I, my assumption is that they perhaps any institution is looking for more nurses, but the problem is there aren't nurses. Um, people are going to nursing school, but quite a number of them don't work in Belize. They move on automatically because the nursing shortage is everywhere. And I know at some of the institutions, people have been pulling double shifts mm -hmm. for years. I mean, you do twice the amount of work because there is no one else to do it. So my question is, in bringing this issue to the forefront, you, you, you said that you don't want to just say it's a problem. You want to offer a solution. What is the solution that you are proposing to this issue? Actually, your, your assumption is pretty much in line. However, two things. We do get a small output of nurses from the university and from surrounding countries that still find Belize as an interesting place yeah. to come and work. So there are the possibility of getting some of, satisfying some of this, this shortage. Yeah. Like I said- How the, do the Cuban doctors and nurses fit into this equation? All right, so though the, the Cuban delegation basically is brought on, depends on the, 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 mm -hmm. requiring the request of the ministry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't want to blatantly throw the Cuban nurses and doctors under the bus, but we have, in the past, there were more mm -hmm. coming across. And we have been facing some difficulties with the way they perform in compared to the guidelines that we have here in Belize. So, mm -hmm. Well, I think the language barrier is perhaps the biggest that's a, that's one. That's one of the yeah. biggest ones. Um, again, the, the way they do their practice, um, the education may be, might be the same but what they bring across or what they learn basically on the, on the units. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all their little misbehaviors and misdeeds that is transcended and then transposed into our system. Mm -hmm. So when we have found difficulty with our staff based on their performance, we have always Sent, sent, had them re make, re made requests to have that staff taken back mm -hmm. and that gradually decreased the amount of positions that were filled. Mm. So the solution you were saying um, is to hire more nurses? To hire them? more nurses and let's, let's apply logic to the equation. All these nurses work pulling doubles. Mm -hmm. It is financially good for the nurse. It is professionally Bad, for, the bad for the nurse and the patient yeah. because you are pulling you're all tired. The, you're mm -hmm. tired. And as I say, if you're pulling a How double, long is a shift? Well, there are people working eight hour shifts, there are people working double okay. and twelve hours. Obviously the ones that are working twelve wouldn't pull doubles. Yeah. But then twelve hours in and of itself that's a long hour yes. long yeah, hours to be working. So mm -hmm. I work twelve hour shift and I love my twelve hour shift. 
However, after that 12-hour shift, I don't you're want to. Out. You, you're you're pretty much done for that day. And I said, so we have. So I'm I'm just trying to understand. So if I if I do an eight double shift, what what is my schedule like? It's 16 hours, seven in the morning so until 11 in the night. Oh, it's eight hours back to back. It's consecutive. Some, most often it's consecutive. There are some nurses who... 16 hours. Yes, there are some nurses who have opted to the position that if you're going to have me double, mm -hmm. then I would like to work like a morning, be rest the evening and then come back in the night. Mm -hmm. um, or work an evening and then come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In, uh, rest, rest the night and come back yeah. in the morning. So things like that we have, we have done for the department so far. But what I was saying that when you do all the math on the amount that GOB is actually paying, mm -hmm. when you compile all the overtimes yeah. that have to be, an overtime hour is an hour and a time and a half. Mm -hmm. So for every three hours overtime, mm -hmm. you could have basically paid four staff. Yeah. You yeah. see? So with the amount of overtime, and if you want to get the work done, you have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. So when you compare now the amount the ministries, the government of Belize is paying in overtime, it is way more than if they, than just if hired they new would employees. hire new employees to the quota that is yeah. necessary. Now, let me ask this. It seems to me that <laughs> to a degree, you would face some kind of objection from others who, for whatever reason, may be content with the double time because they're financially incentivized. They're getting a certain amount of money. And now if you're saying, well, look, let's spread it out so we hire more persons on staff for the same amount of money, then that means my overtime and my, my ability to, to, to make that extra automatically get cut out. Do you have that kind of resistance? Have you, have Persons yeah. expressed an unwillingness to go in that direction. Of course. I don't think we will ever come up with a solution that works for all. Mm -hmm. However, again, when, when you need to know, take your hand out of the gate of the bad jar if you, mm -hmm. if you want, as a, as a government, as, a, as, a, as mm -hmm. an organization. This is not only negative for yeah. the, the, the nurse or mm -hmm. the patient it is also negative for the country because now mm -hmm. you put that nurse um, at a higher risk to commit mm -hmm. yeah. negligent yeah. acts and then the, the ministry obviously retains that the service retain the services services of that nurse mm -hmm. so then by extension yeah. the ministry can be called into question for doing these things mm -hmm. um, so and I think it, it goes back to the core of the work you do it's about proper patient care mm -hmm. and any person overworked naturally, whether, I mean, it's not even intentional, can't be able to deliver the adequate service that they could if they were refreshed and rested. Although I understand what you're saying, mm -hmm. that surely some won't want to give up the compensation, but the purpose of your work is good patient care. Mm -hmm. And again, to, to remedy that issue of the need for the overtime is what that the, the problem there is what's causing our nurses to go away in the first instance. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where if you compare the salaries of a nurse in Belize with the, with the cost of living mm -hmm. and you compare the salary of a nurse in another country with the cost of living, it's, it's no I was way to in, understand Canada has a drive yeah. for nurses. Canada right has now. a drive, quite a bit of for nurses mm -hmm. because people think that, oh, and the nurse left, they mm -hmm. went to the States. Oh, they got in the no, States. Mm -hmm. no. And we are not looking at Canada, UK, other Caribbean mm -hmm. countries since United we are now States. part of the CS. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So these nurses are free to move in a large area. Mm -hmm. So. And I was, I was about to say that anecdotally, I spoke to a, stu I spoke to a student um, at the nursing school who was very clear that her intention is to, and she's already looked through and she's doing her pros and cons of whether she wants to do the UK, USA, or Canada. Um, because it is, they also have the nurse shortage, but they're trying to get people to come based on good packages. Mm -hmm. um, and in Belize, to be fair, we have better packages, which is why we see the Filipinos and we see some of the Central Americans coming in as well, um, and the Nigerians, uh, because we offer a better package or 
perhaps more, more opportunities than they do there. And yes, better, you also see a better package than whom or <laughs> where. Which makes it subjective. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I say, and we, when we touch like the Filipinos, when we touch on topics like the Nigerians, we have to realize that over the years, we have had more of them than Cubans, mm -hmm. but Belize then is used as basically a stepping stone. Yeah. yeah. So they move on from Belize. Yeah. It's so a if you, 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 you're not pure to say then that they came here because of a better package. Mm -hmm. There was a better possibility. Mm -hmm. the, it, Belize opened doors for them mm -hmm. from being here, this standpoint from being here, then they have access now to the broader world. Yeah. Mm. So. That is interesting as well. <laughs> That's like so, a geographical I mean, thing, right? Yeah, and, and just trying to, you know, there, there will only be so much that we could offer. Uh, you, you've been a nurse since 1991, you said, and you're a nurse specialist, right? I do, I do, I do anesthesia yeah. for the yeah. Northern Regional Hospital right so now. It's, so it's similar to, a, there's a general doctor and then a specialized doctor. You are a specialized nurse. That is so. Um, so when you look at, at the situation of nursing, do you think that it can be purely financial um, benefits that will make people want to, one, pursue nursing, but also pursue nursing in Belize? I definitely don't think that it's purely financial. Mm -hmm. um, myself, to speak on a personal note, I am in the position right now to move. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, obviously I'm here for a reason. Yeah. The purpose is there are many, there are quite a bit of nurses who love to work in Belize. They mm -hmm. would want to stay home. Yeah. But when you compile now, they put the problem on the table of the salaries. It is not the most attractive salary. Then you are going to put on the shortage where the, the, the posts basically aren't there. Mm -hmm. So you are given little um, daily sessions to come in. There's no future for your, for your career that okay. way, working on a day-to-day, week-to-week, even month-to-month mm -hmm. -month basis. Mm -hmm. And then you put the lack of ma shortage of materials and, on, on, the, um, on the wards. Supporting services are lacking quite often. Yeah. When you compile all this together, that's what making a lot of the nurses make that decision, you know what, I need to move away. Mm -hmm. mm. So there are, a lot, there are quite a bit of things I said the task force is objectively going to take on quite a bit yeah. of, to clear up all of these areas. I know it, is, it will be kind of unfair for us to decide, you know, let, let's take a strike for a better salary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But let's take a stance to get quite a bit of these things cleared up, make the environment do stressful, do limited in personnel, make it as comfortably at it as possible mm -hmm. yeah. for the nurse while on shift. Yeah. That's a big enough issue on its own, just a <laughs> nursing shortage, but yet there is more. Mm -hmm. You yeah. spoke of needing to get the top, uh, the senior positions filled, um, and, and whether, uh, and then also to address the issue of shortage. Um, there are a couple other issues too that you wanted to, to uh, take to the ministry level. Tell us what the, those are. All right. So. I said it, it is basically to take presentation on all the topics. One, uh, the, the respect a supervisor gets mm -hmm. from the ministry, the support they get from the ministry, where if the supervisor has a problem, there is basically the frustration that there's nothing that they can do. Yeah. Because you write a letter, you, you take all steps necessary, you, you speak to your staff, and basically the ministry ends up doing what they want mm -hmm. or not doing anything to, to help you resolve that issue. So is that no part of why you want the chief nurse? That, that you would write to the chief nurse? That is quite a big part of why we okay. want the chief nurse. And it, I don't want to say it is taking away the power of the minister per se, but I believe that the minister's responsibility is to supervise the positive, productive environment of the entire ministry. So going wrong and circumventing a, a, a supervisor is counterproductive. Mm -hmm. And things like that, those are the key things that we would like to deal with, where if I am the supervisor of this person, 
basically, as long as I am right, what I say ought to be, be what is done. Mm -hmm. And so you take it and you go back to, you know somebody in a ministry or a minister, may not even be minister of health, and you align yourself with that person and then they call down to your supervisor and you can't do the stuff anything. Um, <laughs> so how will we fix a bad situation? So you're saying that there's political interference even at nursing supervision level? There is political inter in interference in this country uh, across all levels, yeah. and it is no different in nursing. No, but I think it's important for us to understand how this works. So you're saying if a nurse doesn't execute their duties properly, did something jeopardize the health of their patient, and you want to write them up as a supervisor, and you want to see some sort of investigate, what would be your recommendation? Investigation, training. Yeah. And I, I don't like the punitive side, but ultimately, mm -hmm. in some cases, you yeah. have to. Yeah. It has to be discussed. Well, I mean, um, healthcare is 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 literally life and death. Sometimes there's a big difference between yeah. a mistake in 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 other jobs and a mistake in healthcare. And you're saying when you want to take that concern up, there's there, there's sometimes political influence that will stop you from being able to take it further. Of course. And now put ourselves in a supervisor's position. If this authority, this responsibility, is, this ability is taken away from you, mm -hmm. how do you guide your flock then? Yeah. Because yeah. The, your neighbor will say, you know what, well, Marlene did that last week, so, mm -hmm. and he get away with it. You're essentially rendered powerless. Exactly. Yeah. You're in a position of power without any power. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. <laughs> there are <laughs> now it, it's it's disheartening that's what it is um because i think that that put and, and i know your point political influence has tentacles everywhere but when you're talking about people who are working with someone who is ill you'd hope that that would be um a bit more protected so your your point is that if there's a chief nurse in place you have a higher advocate um that you can go to although there is an acting there person an acting. in that role all right, so you have a meeting scheduled, scheduled for today. Today. Who are you meeting with and, and what are you hoping the results to be? The meeting is actually from the task force standpoint. And again, it's to go and discuss again the same objectives that we had presented mm -hmm. earlier on. We meet with the Minister of Health this morning. And I want to believe the CEO of, okay. of Health. All right, well, do keep us updated and, and thank you for... Uh, bringing these issues to our, to our um, attention. It is the International Year of yes, Midwives yes, and Nurses, nurses celebrated by the WHO. And that's because globally people uh, were trying to get the attention out that um, this is a very important role in healthcare. So thank you. And thank you guys for having us. We're gonna go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we're gonna be talking to the Forest Department about fire management in Belize, so stay tuned. <laughs>